Hey guys, welcome to another Double Tap on YouTube. I'm Stephen Scott. And I'm Sean Priest. Hello. Now look, we've talked a lot, Sean, about audio description in the oh, past a week or so. Oh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but I want to bring it up one more time, uh, just uh. for now, because, <laughs> look, stay with me on this, right? Because <laughs> I think it's worthwhile. So I tweeted out the other day, and this usually starts a trouble. It always starts yes. getting me in trouble. Anytime always I get, get involved worried. in social media. I know, every single time. Mm -hmm. But... I had tweeted out to ITVX, which is one of the uh, streaming providers in the UK, part of ITV, of course, one of the main uh, and leading broadcasters. Um, I had tweeted out to them uh, that it was, and I didn't really tweet to them. I was, I I'd included them in the message, saying essentially, it was great to see that there was a show called Order, which was on Netflix in the UK, uh, which is an ITV program. Great to see it on Netflix, but sadly, no audio description. So mm -hmm. what I did was I went to the ITVX streaming app because everything on there generally has audio description. All of their content, all of their new content, it certainly has. And uh, yes, sure enough, there was the program on there with audio description. So brilliant, right? Win. Absolutely yes. fantastic. And I wanted to almost congratulate ITV on that. because I thought, That's great. You know, what, what a wonderful thing. And then... But, well, I then went on to say the issue is that it's not available on all platforms. And ITVX came back and said, look, really sorry to hear that. Um, where, what platform are you using? And, you know, we, we'll look into this. And I'm like, well, hang, hang on a minute. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your platform is fine. You mm -hmm. had the program with audio description. I'm talking about Netflix. And I think there was a bit of confusion. So I never heard from ITV again. I think they've blocked me now. Um, but, uh, no, well, hang on. But, they may have been asking in what pla on what platform was AD not available. That's reasonable, isn't it? Well, I did try and explain it. Probably not very well. It was late at night, and uh, my late night tweets never seem to go down very well. Um, <laughs> but I, I will say, you know, I, I think it did kind of make me think. I do feel there's a lack of understanding by the broadcasters about what's actually going on out there regarding audio description and availability of it. So this is a good example of it, where a TV channel, ITV in this case, have created an audio descriptive track for this program. However it happens, whatever the process is, that program is sold internationally or sold whatever in whatever way and appears now in the Netflix catalogue. Still available on ITVX, but it's now available on Netflix as well. But the audio descriptive track doesn't go with it. And yes. I wanted to just say that out loud on air because I, I think this is one example where I wonder who or, or what is going on here. Does the channel know that's the case? Does ITV know that they've put all this work in, they've spent the money on making this descriptive track available for this particular show, but then it hasn't travelled to Netflix with them? Is that deliberate? Does ITV have a plan not to do that? Is it sold separately, for example? I, I'd, I'd love to understand what's going on, and I would love to put it out there to all broadcasters that this is going on. Because I don't think a lot of people understand this. I don't think a lot of people within the channels know they might sit there and think, well, we made the descriptive track, we've done it, so what's the problem? But then I go to that provider, that in this case Netflix, and the show's not there with audio description. Yeah. And why is that? It's a question we've been asking a lot. I can't really get a, uh, an answer to it. We've spoken to people who work in audio description. You know, we had Eric from IDC on the show. Yeah. Um, I've spoken to a few people, and it's as frustrating for them as it is for us, the end user. But it, again, I think it just goes to show how the, the, that part of the entire show, the package, if you will, just isn't important it either isn't important or it's all about the money that was spent in producing that audio descriptive track in the first place and trying to recoup that by selling it on and maybe netflix are saying you know what we we do our own ad anyway so we'll leave that there and we'll do our own later on or maybe they just won't but i mean it's either way it's it's frustrating for us the end the only people that really suffer are us that's right. And, and we then start going on this AD hunt, don't we? We have to start chasing the yep. audio description, you know, chase the haggis around the <laughs> fields of Scotland. 
Is that a thing, Stephen? Is, is yes, that, that's absolutely okay. a thing. Well, um, no, and that's it, what and we tell the tourists to do. It keeps the American tourists busy when they come to hunting. Scotland. Yeah. But no, look, joking aside, and that's the very reason, and some people may frown upon this, but, you know, people use VPNs to change their location to access a streaming service in another country because for some unknown reason, that country has an AD track on a show I want to watch, but my country doesn't. Um, or, you you know, you find the soundtrack on somewhere online um, because basically you're just trying to hunt down uh, the, the show you want to watch, which you may have valid, perfectly legal access to on the streaming service you're subscribed to, but it hasn't got the audio track that you need. I mean, again, I totally understand why people do that. So one show I'd love to watch, and I've often fancied watching it because it does seem quite funny. I'm generally, comedies difficult with me because I either find it hilariously funny or don't. Usually if there's an audience in it, I tend not to like it, with the exception of Cheers and Frasier, uh, because those two shows were funny. But okay. every other show is terrible. And there's one programme which which uh. I've often wanted to see, because I watched the first episode and it seemed very funny. It was called Shit's Creek. Yes. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's it's a very funny programme. This I think it's like a really wealthy couple and they lose everything and they're forced to live in this town called Shit's Creek, which is kind of funny. And okay. um, they have to Stop go and live there. Stop saying that name. But, it, but that's what it's called, right? That's the name Stop of the place. It. But here's the thing. That show had audio description on it when it was on AMI. And I don't know where that came from. And, you know, I, I don't have, I have no pool around here uh, at uh, Double Taps. So, you know, I, I sit here in this room and speak to the nation, hoping that someone listens. But, you know, I, I don't know what happened to that. But that is not available with audio description on the provider I find it on, which I think is Netflix over here. Yes. And I can't get it. Now, it has turned up with audio description on certain platforms outside of this country. I think it has appeared on TV with audio description, but of course that's been and gone, so it's that's it, it's gone. I just cannot seem to find audio description on this. Outlander, my wife loved this TV show, Outlander. She got through the first season, and it was great. She loved it. And then the second season came along, there was no audio description. And yes, the problem is yes. there was a lot of it where um, th there was a lot of, uh, it wasn't just English, it was in French as well. Yes. And what would tend to happen there is the audio description would read the cap or the audio describer would read the captions. Um, and that was that would be great. But again, can't find it. And I have searched, literally searched high and low, like called broadcasters, gone into <laughs> stores where they sell it on DVD. Can I get this? It just seems to me, why is it so difficult to watch a TV program when you're blind? When it's when the, the most frustrating part is the work has been done to make it accessible, yet I still have to chase it down. Yeah. I feel like this could be a Netflix TV show in itself. Chasing AD. Yeah, no, well, look, it, uh, when you said, I, I want to talk about audio description, and you, you, you just told me about you know your interaction with ITVX, um, I, I was thinking, yeah, but we've covered this, and is there anything that we haven't talked about when it comes to AD? Because... All we're sort of saying here is, isn't it frustrating? But there is a difference. I think you're right, actually, that this angle is interesting, is do the actual broadcasters themselves know? Do they even mm. have an... There's another example where you rang up a, a particular broadcaster and said, hey, the AD isn't on this particular show, and they just flicked a switch and turned it on, right? I well, mean, I'll, I'll tell you about that story. Right, so There's a friend of mine who worked <laughs> at STV, Scottish Television, and he, uh, the same, this is exactly what happened. I was watching uh, Scottish television, which is Scotland's, uh, one of Scotland's national yes. broadcasters. Um, Haggis hunting the final. Haggis TV. Yes. And I was watching <laughs> Haggis TV with no audio description on Sky television. And because again, you've got so many different ways to consume TV now. So you've got over the air, you've got cable, you've got satellite. Like any country, there are different methods. The version I use was satellite. So on satellite TV, uh, Scottish television did not have an audio descriptive track running. So if you if you wanted to watch, say, a, uh, any show, frankly, on there with audio description, you had to turn over to ITV, which is the national 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 broadcaster. Does this make any sense? If no. you don't know UK media, you will not know what on earth <laughs> I'm talking about. But essentially, STV is a franchise of ITV in Scotland, so that's how it, uh, it works. So if you wanted programmes on STV with audio description you had to turn to ITV, the main network channel. Um, so 
So I suppose it would be like a, an affiliate of NBC versus the, the network channel itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with all that going on, you know, I, I thought, hang on. I, I know a guy who works there. And I just said to him, look, I don't suppose there's a button somewhere in the control room that says AD on it, right? Just like Like a jokingly. big remote control. <laughs> yeah, just somewhere there's a button that's not that's not lit up that says AD. And there was. I don't know what the button said, but it was like, you know, said something about that. The button was pressed. Bang, that was it. We had audio description. Um, no, wow, I tried the same thing. You're such thing. an advocate. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All powerful eye. But here's the thing. I tried the same thing with the BBC and got nowhere. Because yeah. it was such a vast, big organisation and, you know, it, it has multiple channels and multiple networks, so it's much more difficult to narrow it down, uh, especially who to speak to. But, you know, there is a problem in accessing AD in itself. That was accessing it on the base level of just actually being accessing it on TV, on linear TV. But what I'm really talking about here is the on-demand side, and that's the frustration because, to me, if subtitles can make their way why can't audio description? Why can't that make the same journey? And I don't yeah, understand. It. I, I I get I absolutely get what you're saying and the frustration. Yes, I, um, we've talked about it. But the point being, who do we shout at? Who do we talk to now? Because we've spoken well, this is to... YouTube. We just shout to the void. Ah, right. Hope it's someone listens. Generally, anybody. Okay. Yes. We've we've spoken to the people who produce the AD. They're doing an amazing job. They're incredibly passionate about it. By the way absolutely want to do a great job and they're frustrated when it doesn't get passed along to us um i mean we have legislation that a certain amount of ad has to be in uh broadcast and they're being hit it's just a case of we seem to be ticking a box that okay we've made an ad track however that's done we've made that and now we forget about it as soon as that tick box has been ticked i don't know how we mm. make this part of the package how we make sure that the ad is seen as important as hey you wouldn't send out a video without any soundtrack whatsoever well this is the same thing i don't know well, where I, we I, go I from it here. to pictures i just akin it to picture you, you wouldn't send out a video without a picture yeah and and of course you wouldn't because if you did that no one would be able to watch it and you would have mutiny if you had, you know, a lot of people saying, hang on a minute, where's this? I want to watch this film and there's no video. So where and do we mutiny? Video. Audio description is our picture. It is, but where where do we mutiny at? Who who are we aiming our ire at now? Who? Well, this is why I want to have this conversation because the honest answer is I don't know. I mean, I have had so many interesting conversations over the years. I've had the joy of presenting at major audio description conferences in the UK and I've spoken to the broadcasters directly. I've spoken to pretty much all of them. And they're mm -hmm. all on board. Netflix are on board. Prime Video are on board. You know, Channel 4, ITV, BBC, Channel 5, Sky. They're all saying the right things. They're all doing the right things. Of course, bah. regulation plays its part here, right? Yes. Well, let me finish this. They're all playing their part because regulation tells them to play their part. And some are going further than others. And that's important to recognise. In fact, I think in the UK, we're, we're actually doing pretty well in terms of our audio description output because I do. of the amount of work that's done. Of course, you know, once you start audio describing content and with the number of repeats on TV, that number can inflate. Yes. Uh, perhaps beyond what you might think is is being actually done. So that's one thing. But that's not to do down the work they do. Um, and I think it's important that we recognise the work they do. But on-demand services are not regulated quite as much yet. There are laws going through Parliament in the UK that are encouraging, well, not encouraging, but will we'll bring into law this demand for there to be more content available with description and subtitling as well. And that's really important, I think, because clearly regulation works. It worked for audio description on linear TV. It'll do the same on demand TV. But it is going to take time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But He's I still think there's a bigger issue here. And the bigger issue is that there's a lack of understanding about the inclusion of that audio descriptive track whenever that program is sold or is, you know, made available to another network. It doesn't travel with it. And to me, they need to be the one package. So my my message here is to all broadcasters to say, you really have got to see this as a package deal. And it's also upon other providers, I think, to ask the question, where's the audio descriptive track? We've got the subtitles, we've got the picture, we've got the 18 different languages. But do we have description? And it, it should just be part of the deal. Some might be doing it, 
but I'm not seeing evidence that they're all doing no, it. No, I, I, I don't think anyone's doing it. I, I, I've got no insider information, of course not, but well, I don't I just think. see it. I mean, I, I, well, there's an example, the evidence. right? I go right back to that first example with this TV show on it. And I only pick on it because I was interested in watching that show and I saw it was on Netflix and it made me think about the ITV equivalent, yes. which did have AD. Now, Netflix have committed a lot of time and money into making really good audio descriptive content from their own originals and new content. But what they don't seem to be doing is pulling in the audio descriptive content that's already available. But again, we don't know why. Is that because yeah. they're requesting it and they're not getting it or they're not asking for it? These are the questions I think we need to be asking. We need to get a, a, a someone representing, uh, I don't know, even one broadcaster wouldn't be enough though, right? You no, it's not enough. These... That's why we need, this is why, you know, I could sit here and I could say to you, let's get every single broadcaster we can think of on. But, you know, it only takes one not to do it. And that's what the show is that you want to watch. You know, that's the problem, right? This needs to be, there needs to be some kind of coming together in this. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what the answer to it is, but something has to be done to bring everyone together and to think very simply, you have done the work here. I, this is the one time we're not asking people to go and do something. Something must be done. We're yes. not at that stage it, because it's already been done. Just pick it up. Someone has already done it for Use you. It. Just pick and it I've up. I've got to say, I'll say one more thing on this because I know we're probably way over our, Sorry. our time. I, I thought we said this was short form here on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> um, but listen, the one thing that gets me, and I've heard this before, there are people who advocate that we, as say people in the UK, should only have audio description in UK English. So mm. therefore, if a show is created in the States and audio description is done by a US narrator, we should have that changed here. Now, the reason given is because of the language differences. There are language differences. I mean, a simple one might be pavement to sidewalk, right? Trash to bin, that kind of, you know, there's simple yeah, yeah. examples. But there are times where words are used that maybe don't quite translate or are, are as understandable. Um, I get that. But to me, that isn't really an issue anymore. I think that's less of an issue now than it ever was. And also, you're not asking the entire movie to be remade in UK English. You know, mm -hmm. Beverly Hills Cop, the new edition. I'd like to hear that in an RP English voice, please, <laughs> because I have no idea what these Americans are saying. Yes, Nobody Notting Hill that. Cop. Yeah, I, uh, Language, that's different. Language, as in, you know, a different language, that's different. But English, UK English to US English, is it really that different? I don't think it is, and it's not enough to justify that should be having a the preference. entire show redone with AD. And here's the thing. What does that often mean? It means it's done to a poorer quality, to a poorer standard, or not at all. Yep. I agree. I agree. I don't know how we how we fix this, but it needs looking into. Well, we started a conversation. You can continue in the comments below. Uh, and, of course, you can email us, feedback at doubletaponair.com. Call us, 1-877-803-4567. It's a bit of a bee in my bonnet, this issue. It really irritates me because I mm. want to enjoy all this great stuff that's going on out there. And I just feel there's so much. I'm chasing it. And, you know, I want to watch Outlander, Schitt's Creek, whatever it is. I want to watch these things, and I just cannot get near them. And it's not I for don't, you. Uh, it feels, it feels something, you know, it almost feels like that a little bit. It's like, oh, am I not allowed to watch this then? No, it's just too adult only. for me. Yeah. 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 So, but I know that's not the case. It's just, it's, it's clearly some contractual thing, something ridiculous, and it's got to be changed because you know what? We want to watch this content. We want to enjoy this content like you do. And we should be able to, especially when you've gone to the bloody effort to actually make it accessible. <laughs> Goodness me. Anyway, <sighs> we're out of time. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Sean, thanks again for doing this. Thank you. Bye-bye.